saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified. Hello, uh, wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching, welcome to our online PW. Uh, our service tonight is titled The Greatest Love. And we come to think more about the greatest love that was ever shown um, at this time of year, the death of Jesus and the resurrection. Um, and Sarah McNee, uh, wife of Reverend Stephen McNee from Bally Albany and Glennon Churches, is going to share uh, with us tonight just on that topic. Uh, we also have um, our very own Pamela Patton who's going to share a little bit of her life story tonight. So I hope you really enjoy the messages and um, I hope you enjoy the songs. Uh, sit back and relax and I trust that you will be blessed tonight. Um, and for those of you who know and love the Lord Jesus as your personal saviour, that you will just be uh, filled with his blessing and his love and his comfort tonight. Um, and for those who maybe don't know the Lord Jesus as their saviour, I just pray that you would come to know and trust him as your own and personal saviour. Um, so I'm just going to commit uh, the meeting in prayer. Dear God and Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for the greatest love that you have shown. Lord, I thank you how we see pieces of this across creation, Lord, even uh, just this nice weather at the moment and um, just all that you have done for us and given to us daily, Lord, for the food that we have, the clothes that we have, for just the love that you so gratefully bestow upon us day by day. Lord, I pray for everyone watching here tonight that you would just bless them, Lord, in this meeting. And Lord, I pray that you will just meet each person at the point of their need. Lord, we all have different needs. And Lord, I pray that uh, each person watching will know you at the point of their need. Lord, I just commit this meeting into your hands for every part of it. Thank you for Sarah and um, Pamela willing to share with us and for Charlie's gifts that he has and putting all this together. Just bless us all now. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned
will be my theme through the ages to see everybody and as part of the PW meeting this evening Janice has asked me to share a little bit on how I came to trust in Jesus for myself. Now, I grew up in a Christian home where church and church activities formed a large part of our life. I'm thankful for very faithful parents who taught my brother to know the message of the Bible and encouraged us in our own walk with God. And as I think back, I realise I was blessed with many Sunday school teachers and youth leaders also who explained the Bible clearly and simply. In my early days of Sunday school, I was taught the catechisms and memory verses and hymns. These truths have remained with me and been a great source of challenge and encouragement and comfort throughout my life. As I grew, I became more aware that my sin caused a division between me and God. I began to understand that family background and attending church and knowing Bible stories just wasn't enough and I had to make a personal decision to seek God and to seek his forgiveness. It says in Romans chapter 3 verse 10, no one is righteous, not even one. And in verse 23 it says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. At age 11, I had an awareness of my wrongdoings and I, my need for forgiveness. On New Year's Eve that year, I went to my room and I sought God in my life. There was no flashing light or trumpet call or voice. However, I knew that God had heard my prayer and answered. Thankfully, this is only the beginning of a journey which I am so thankful for. As I grew into my teenage years, I had great youth leaders and a minister who faithfully explained the Bible each week. I was able to grow in my knowledge and understanding of the Bible and what it meant to be a Christian. I was slowly able to comprehend and accept the truths such as 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 which reads, My grace is sufficient for you. And Titus 3 verse 5 reads, he saved us not because of righteous things that we have done, but because of his mercy. I began to realise the great sacrifice paid for me, and I started to want to tell others about it too. These verses and the truth of the gospel give us a great hope in life, that there's more to come. Philippians chapter 3 verse 14 encourages us to press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. And as a Christian, heaven is our home, a place of beauty where God is and we can be too. However, as a Christian, we must remember that we are called to live for Jesus here and now. A memory verse that I learnt as a child and so often teach the children in kids clubs now is John chapter 10 verse 10 which reads, I have come that may, they may have life and have it to the full. Life isn't easy 
and it hasn't been easy. But as a Christian, it can be filled with joy, peace, blessing and assurance of a God who is loving and caring and interested in each part of our lives. We can trust in Jesus. Going to college in my late teens, making friends, having a choice of career, meeting William, I can look back at all of those and see a God who was faithful and answered prayers in, through those times. Through times of uncertainty, illness and family, and times of questioning and doubt, I've had to learn to live out Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 which says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. The next part of that verse reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. It can be very difficult to fully trust God in every situation in life and to hand all our cares and worries to him. Sometimes we want to hold on to it. We can doubt that God is there and we want to sort the problems ourselves. However, through life, God has shown himself to be faithful and dependable and true. We read in Psalm 46, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. We need to hear those words now more than ever in the midst of all that's going on. I encourage you as you listen to our meeting this evening to seek God for yourself, to turn to him and to trust in him and to live in him. Thank you. I don't know about tomorrow I just live from day to day and I don't borrow from the sunshine for its skies may turn to gray and I don't
my name is Sarah McNee. I'm married to Stephen. Um, he's the minister of Biome and Glennon Churches in Monaghan. And we have a daughter, Beth, and she is five months old. Um, I'd just like to thank Janice for asking me to come and talk to you tonight. Um, she's told me that your theme is the greatest love. Um, there are so many types of love. There's a mother's love for her child, um, a love between husband and wife, um, and sibling love, and even love within a friendship. But as Christians, um, we can all agree that God's love is the greatest love that we can feel, that we can receive um, or experience. But can we really comprehend what God's love is really like? There's a song, wide, wide as the ocean, high as the heavens above, deep, deep as the deepest sea is my Saviour's love. I, though so unworthy, still I'm a child in his care, for his word teaches me that his love reaches me everywhere. How many times have we sang that song or heard the words in Sunday school or in a kids club and never really thought about them? Um, I want to read from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19. It says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And verse 18 there says, May you have the power to understand as all the people of God should how wide, how long, how high and how deep is his love. Paul writes this portion of scripture in Ephesians as a prayer to the Ephesians, urging them to comprehend Christ's love for them. And the love is already explained in chapters 1 and 2 of Ephesians. But I want to specifically look at verse 18 tonight. I want to look at how wide how long, how high and how deep God's love is for us. First of all, how wide. We can see the width of God's love by his state of being omnipresent. Omnipresent literally means widespread. And in terms of God, it means that he is everywhere at the same time. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13 and verse 19 Verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And verse 19 says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Verse 13 says that we're joined together. By Christ shedding his blood, he has joined us together. And verse 19 says that we are no longer aliens or strangers, but we are members of God's household. We are citizens. In Philippines chapter 2 and verse 10, it says, So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth. That's how wide God's love is. Every knee, everyone every man, woman, child, young or old, that every knee will bow. And verse, or Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12, really sum up and confirm how God is omnipresent. It says in verse 7, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I free from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and I dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, 
Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright in the day, for darkness is as light with you. In verse 7 there it says, Where shall I go? Where shall I flee? These verses describe how we can't escape the width of God's love. And then the length of God's love. In Jeremiah 31, on verse 3, it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Everlasting. It's as long as eternity. It's immeasurable. It can't be measured in any way. Verse 3 also talks about God's faithfulness in his love as well as the length of his love. Faithfulness suggests the length of someone's love. In this case, God's love is everlasting. Faithfulness means that you're reliable, that you can be trusted, that you can be believed. And God is faithful. This is who God is. We can rely on his promises. We can trust him for his plans and purposes in our life. And we can believe his holy word. When we think of love as being everlasting, we think of a commitment and an unconditional commitment. The love that Paul writes about in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 18 is agape love. Agape love does include emotion, but it em its emphasis is on an unconditional commitment. Agape love is selfless, it's sacrificial love, and this is the type of love that describes God best. John three sixteen, it says that God sent his only son and then the height of God's love. Psalm 103 verse 11 says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. When David was writing this, he would have spent a lot of time outside. And at night he probably would have stargazed quite a lot. He probably didn't understand how far the earth was from the stars the way that we do today. But he did understand that they were extremely high and extremely distant from earth and knew that God's love stretched further than that for his people. When we think of God being high, we think of him being exalted. To exalt someone is to put them in the highest place and to exalt God is to raise him above everything else in our lives. In Philippians chapter 2, on verse 8 and 9, it says, And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. God exalted Jesus above everything, and he's worthy of our exaltation. But at times we exalt other things above him. We exalt TV, social media, work, our relationships. And God would have been just to destroy man for this. Instead, he sent his only son to die for sinners. And in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, it sums this up. But God showed his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. And lastly, we look at the depth of his love. Micah chapter 7 and verse 19 it says he will again have compassion on us he will tread our iniquities underfoot he will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. God has cast our sins into the depths of the sea where they can never be recovered again. Have you ever thrown something into the sea at the shoreline and it just keeps coming back with the tide or with the waves. But if you throw something into the depths of the sea, it will never return again. Christ's victory on the cross has done this for our sin. It, his victory can never be reversed. And by, we no longer carry the guilt and the shame of our sin because of Christ's death on the cross. It was the ultimate act of love. And to close, I just want to read a quote from Spurgeon about God's love. But to know the love itself, 
to taste the sweets, to realise personally, experimentally and vitally the love of Christ as shed abroad in our hearts. By the Holy Ghost is the privilege of the child of God and of the child of God alone. We can know a family love, we can know a love from a mother or from a friend, but it is the privilege of the child of God alone that can experience and feel God's love. And that is the greatest love of all. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure how great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Why should 